Hi everybody, welcome to this special edition of Tech and My Energy Future, Meet the STEM Hero. We have here my friend, Dr. Jose Vega, which could you please introduce yourself? Hi everyone, my name is Jose Vega uh, and I am here, glad, very glad to be with all of you here. Um, I am a, my title is a senior scientist and I work in Orange County, in California small company called NMA Corporation. We're a research company. We do a lot of battery research mainly. And that's why I'm a battery scientist. That was, uh, I think batteries are a very important uh, part of our renewable energy future, future. And I was actually very interested in renewable energy and renewable science. Since I was a small kid, I was like six or seven years old when I became very interested in things like wind energy and solar energy. I had no idea what they were, but I really wanted to understand it. And I think that actually started for me a, a, a passion for science, for understanding things. And I think that is the best part of my job right now. I just get to do something that I love. I just get to go into a lab every day and I get to play with science. I just get to do what I like. And even though I was very interested in lots of things within the renewable energy field, I was also very, very interested in batteries. They're very important for a green energy future. You know, we have all of these sources of renewable energy and we need to store all of that energy someplace, somehow. And batteries are a very important part of that. But before we talk a little bit more about science, let me tell you a little bit of where I'm from. So if we move to the next slide, as you can see, I'm actually from a small island, uh, Puerto Rico, which is in the Caribbean. Uh, my dad is actually from New York and he moved to Puerto Rico when he was a kid. He met my mom and we, I grew up there. I'm actually from a small town called Rincon, which you can see in the lower right there, that beautiful, beautiful place. It's very well known for the sun, for the beach and for surfing. Lots of, lots of surfing, tournaments, lots of very famous surfers go there for the tournaments. So it's a pretty cool place. When I was growing up, my dad was actually in the state. He's also in STEM, in a STEM field. He's a chemical engineer. He worked for many years at Hewlett Parker. He actually started there in the environmental health and safety department as an engineer. And he worked with his way up. And then he was a manager for many, many years, for over 20 years uh, until he retired. And he's a very important person to me, a source of inspiration. He was actually the first person in his whole family to get a university degree. So I'm very, very proud of him. Um, my mom is an administrative assistant. She worked for many years at a bank. And then my brother is an accountant. And he lives in up north, close to New York, actually. He lives in New Hampshire. Really enjoys it there. So if we move on, um, let me tell you a little bit about me. I, uh, ever since I was a kid, I have a few hobbies that I've always, always had. One of them is reading. I love, love to read. I started with uh, children's stories, a lot of Disney stories. Then I started reading a little bit about dinosaur stories. And actually that was one of the things that triggered my interest in science. I started writing with reading dinosaur stories, but then I just wanted to know more about dinosaurs, actual dinosaurs, how do they grow, how do, when, when were they alive, what kinds, and just started learning a lot about them. Then I became very interested in space, astronomy, the moon, the planets. Um, so ever since I was a kid, I, I, I saw that I had a very large interest in science. Um, not just that, but I really, I like video games. I've always, ever since I was a kid, I really like the sports video games, a lot of the basketball and baseball, car racing, those are very, very fun all the time. I like all things science fiction, movies, shows, even some books, all things Star Trek and Star Wars and superheroes, those, those things, I just find them very cool. But going back to the, uh, my interest in the STEM fields. When I was a kid, you know, my, uh, my dad was a, what they call a grease monkey. He was also always working in the car, always fixing it, everything that went wrong, he would fix it. And I, would, I was just always beside him. Not because he made me, I just wanted to. I find it very fascinating how this huge machine has so many different small parts that all work together. So I always wanted to understand how that works. He was, all, he, he was always very patient with me. He would always explain to me how everything worked. 
that is broke, you will take it and I will get to keep it and I will just take it apart, look at it on the inside, try to learn how to put it back together and have that kind of curiosity to just try to learn how things work. That was just the car and then with time, I, I became eager just to fix things around the house. Became eager to fix the, things to break down, just so that I could fix it. <laughs> Um, and that's just, just because I wanted to learn. I wanted to learn how it worked. Um, and those are the things that I just, I, I just, I just love to do those things. Now let me start, should tell you my, about my path here. So I, mean, I told you that I grew up in Puerto Rico. I went to the University of Puerto Rico. That's where I did my bachelor's. Then I moved to Atlanta uh, to do my master's. And I did that at Georgia Tech. I did my PhD at the University of Connecticut. That I moved all north, where it's cold. I stayed there for a few years, but actually, after the University of Connecticut, my first job was in Massachusetts, and my second job was in New Hampshire. Both of those were also battery related, working battery companies. After that, I moved to Florida, and after Florida, well, I moved here to California, where we are. And that's, that's one of those things that I really like about my career. Not just the education, but the job part has given me the opportunity to live all around the US. And I've actually met a lot of people, I've met a lot of friends that I've known in many, many different places in the US. So uh, it's actually something that I've really, really enjoyed. Um, one of the, I, I would call that one of the really good perks about my career that I've been able to travel and get to know a lot of people. So if we move on with the presentation, let me just tell you. Um, what I have to learn to get here. Science, within the STEM field, I deal with mainly with science, and it's, it's a lot about curiosity. It's a lot about having a sense of wonder, uh, discovering what, what's for one thing you want to focus on, that you want to focus all of that curiosity on, and try to understand it, and not just try to understand it, but try to make it better, try to improve it. And you have to be very comfortable with, with a process of trial and error. That's how science works. We accumulate data with trial and error. We have to be very comfortable with that. It's also very, a very, very fascinating but complicated system. So it's very important to learn how to collaborate with other people. Um, you have to learn how to do your own experiments, how to come up with your own experiments, how to, pull, how to design your own experiments, but you have to also learn how to have that work along with all along with all the other people that you're working along. And that's a very, very important part of it. Um, it's something that goes uh, along with many other fields. It's that patience is a virtue. I really, I, I, for me, that's, that's actually something very important because, as I said, you're, do, you're doing a process of trial and error, and you're going to fail a lot. You have to be very patient, and you have to understand that it's more about learning from your point of failure and improving on your process. And some of the problems are very, very hard to solve. So just remember that the harder the problem to solve, the more satisfying it is when you finally get that answer. All right, so let me conclude uh, by giving you guys uh, a little bit of advice. I mean, if, uh, let me tell you guys, if you're interested in science, try it. There's lots of demonstrations that you can find everywhere. Uh, when I was a kid, I, you know, I remember I used to do a lot of this kind of from Bill, uh, Bill Knight, a science guy, and my dad was also very happy to help me with all that stuff. So, you know, find someone that's also interested in doing experiments and do it with them. Look online, go to YouTube, there's a lot of uh, age appropriate demonstrations of experiments, things that you can do that are good. And always remember, be safe when you do it. Ask your parents and make sure that you're safe when you do it. As a battery scientist, I have to tell you, remember, and remind your parents to always recycle your batteries. Always, always, there's many places where you can recycle your batteries. And always remember that STEM is awesome. STEM fields are really cool, but there's many different ways in which you can contribute. If you don't like STEM, there's many other fields. There's many good contributions that you can make as a politician, as a lawyer, as an accountant, as a psychologist, as a doctor, you know, go to a medical field. There's many contributions you can do to discover. Try to discover what you like and be happy with it and make your contribution. Thank you all. Thank you, Jose, for that presentation. That was really awesome. It was really cool to hear about
the work you do with batteries and how that affects our environment and the energy that we use around us. Uh, we have a couple of student questions here. The first one would be, you talk about how science is a lot of trial and error and a lot of times it can feel like it's more error than success. How do you keep yourself motivated to continue that? Ah, that's an excellent question. And you have to look at what is the motivation, right? So what is that you're trying to do? And in different fields, there's different kinds of motivation. But I can tell you as a scientist in the high field, the main motivation, what is it is, is generating knowledge, is discovering something that you did not know. And you can do that by succeeding, but you can also do it, uh, do it by not succeeding. So when you have an experiment that doesn't succeed, you still you accomplish your goal because you try to understand why it did not succeed. And you learn something. So you, that's, that is the motivation. The motivation is you learn and you go with the mindset that you're mostly going to fail. But every time you, when you fail, you learn why you fail. And when you try again, you're that much closer to the truth because you're doing a better job for what you learned the last time. That's really cool for you to say because a lot of times we like to focus on the solution, the end goal of our projects, but it's really the path that it, we take along the way that we learn and grow from to get to where we need to be. Absolutely, and, yes. That science is not about the results. Science is more about the process. It's how, how you got to the result. Yeah, and uh, for another question, we also have, um, what made you want to pursue higher education and go into getting your master's and PhD? Yes, that's actually it. So when I decided, um, I was actually doing, let me put it this way, during undergrad, I had two research opportunities, research opportunities for undergraduates, which are limited, but uh, if you go to that, you can get the experience a small experience of what it will be like in grad school. Um, I had a research project during undergrad related to making fertilizer uh, out of ash, which was environmentally related. And then I had another project working with human subjects and how do they uptake gases in their lungs. And I thought that was very cool. That actually led me to think that during the, I should say, during both of those projects, I was actually working along graduate students. They were both doing their PhDs. And they actually also told me and sort of educated me on how it is, what's the process to be like to be in grad school in a science field. And I discovered that it's actually not a lot of classes. Yes, you do take classes, but it's a lot of research. You do spend a lot of time in the lab learning how to do research. And when, I, and when I discovered that, I, I, I found out that that is what I wanted to do. I have this curiosity and understanding things. I have this passion for electrochemistry. So I get to, if I choose this career path, I get to actually do what I love, which is spend my time and spend my career, try to make this aspect of our energy future, future better, the energy storage aspect. Um, grad school gave me the opportunity to do that is just learn how to come up with new ideas but not only how to come up with them but how to test them and how to make them work and that's actually the main reason why i chose to go to grad school and i i, I started with a master's to make sure that i actually wanted to do it as a, as a career path in a master's i was part of a research project and i liked it enough that i actually wanted to go a step further on and wanted to be the leader of a research project. And that's why I actually went to do my PhD. And being the leader, pro the leader uh, of our research project also showed me a lot of, uh, also how to design experiments and how to appropriately apply the methods of science. Really cool, very cool. That's really interesting to hear. And I'm glad you talked about how your grad school experience gave you a lot of opportunity to participate in a lot of your own experience. And then as you go into your PhD, you got to like lead your own experiments, which I also think is really cool. 
Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you sharing your story with us. And Thank you. <laughs> and we hope that we inspire a whole bunch of young battery scientists. <laughs> I hope so too. Yeah, it's a great field to be in. Yeah, and it's very, very in demand now. <laughs> very cool. Well, thank you again, and we'll see you next time. All right. Bye, everyone.